Hello everyone, in this class we will learn about reticular endothelial system. There are special groups of cells scattered in different parts of body which play an important role in the defense mechanism. The combination of monocytes, mobile macrophages, fixed macrophages and few specialized endothelial cells in the bone marrow, spleen, lymph nodes is called reticular endothelial system. It is also known as monocyte macrophage system. Almost all these cells originate from monocyte stem cells. The macrophages can phagocytosize abnormal body tissue, microbes and foreign particles. The tissue macrophages are of two types, fixed and wandering. Some of the site of occurrence of fixed macrophages are spleen and bone marrow. In these tissues, macrophages have been become entrapped by the reticular meshwork of, of the two organs. When the foreign particles come in contact with these macrophages, they are phagocytosized. They present in both red and white pulp of the spleen. Macrophages of the spleen and bone marrow are called as reticulum cells. Reticulum cells of spleen can phagocytosize RBC, platelets, parasite and bacteria. From hemoglobin of the RBC, these macrophages produce bilirubin. Lungs, the macrophages are found in the alveoli. They can phagocytosize dust and carbon particles. In liver, sinusoids of the liver are uh, lined by macrophages. These are called as kuffer cells. Uh, the kuffer cells remove bacteria of the portal venous blood. Portal vein contains bacteria coming from the intestine. The presence of kuffer cells in uh, they ensure effective filtration so that the hepatic venous blood is free of or free from bacteria. In lymph nodes, if the particles are not destroyed locally in the tissues, they enter the lymph and flow to the lymph nodes. The foreign particles are entrapped in these nodes in a meshwork of sinuses lined by tissue macrophages. These macrophages phagocytosize the particles entering the sinuses. Lymphatic system. Lymphatic system exists in all organs with exception of central nervous system and cornea. Lymph is a tissue fluid that enters lymphatic vessels and then drains into the venous blood via thoracic duct and right uh, lymphatic duct. Lymph contains clotting factor and it clots on standing in vitro. It is a transparent yellowish in color, faintly alkaline and its colloidal osmotic pressure is less than that of plasma. Its formation. Its formation is based on the transcapillary exchange. Lymph is derived from the interstitial fluid that flows into the lymphatics. It enters terminal lymphatics uh, which has the same composition of that interstitial, interstitial fluid. The protein concentration of the lymph is uh, clear uh, and 2 grams per deciliter which is average protein concentration of interstitial fluid. Even large particles such as bacteria can push their way between the endothelial cells of lymphatic capillaries thereby they can enter into the lymph. As we told, the formation of the lymph it depends on the starling forces, that is the rate of filtration at any point along the capillary depends. A capillary depends on a balance of the of uh, forces which are called as stars, uh, starling forces. Hence, fluid movement depends on the constant factor and the difference in the hydrostatic pressure minus difference in the osmotic pressures in the in the capillary and in the interstitium. Here K is the capillary filtration coefficient, PC is capillary hydrostatic pressure, PI is interstitial hydrostatic pressure, Pi C is capillary colloidal osmotic pressure, Pi I is interstitial colloidal osmotic pressure which is negligible. And so this is the hydrostatic pressure gradient and this is osmotic pressure gradient. The total estimated lymph flow, lymph flow, lymph flow is uh, around 120 ml per hour, or 2 to 
थ्री लीटर पर लीटर पर डे so this is how these are the factors which are affecting the stalling forces uh, they are going to differ and at the arterial end compared to the venular end the hydrostatic pressure at the arterial end is 37 mm of hg and the osmotic pressure is constant it is around 25 mm of hg okay so the the, the fluid which is flowing across the arterial end uh, the pressure gradient is since uh, the capillary hydrostatic pressure is more than the osmotic pressure uh, in the capillaries uh, the gradient is produces 12 mm of hg across the arterial end which flows from the artery into the interstitium whereas at the venous end uh, the the hydrostatic pressure gradually reduces down and it comes down to the down to 15 mm of hg whereas the osmotic pressure is going to remain at 25 mm of hg so the pressure gradient created uh, here is around 10 mm of hg and which uh, helps in the drawing of the blood from the interstitium back into the capillary so hence the fluid is absorbed here and the arterial end it is going to be filtrated so and you can see the 12 mm of hg uh gradient is created at the arterial end and 10 mm of hg uh, gradient is created while the fluid is being absorbed some amount of the fluid is going to remain in the interstitium and that is going to be drained by the lymphatics so the functions of lymph the lymph returns proteins water and electrolytes from tissue spaces to the blood and thus controls the concentration of proteins in the interstitial fluid and it is also going to control the volume of interstitial fluid and the pressure the absorption it helps in the absorption of nutrients especially fats from the git lymph acts as a transport mechanism to remove red blood cells that have lost uh, into the tissues as a result of hemorrhage and lymph Uh, the lymph nodes act as efficient filters they have sinuses lined with phagocytic cells that engulf bacteria red blood cells and other particulate matter that is bacteria or toxins or uh, which are carried through the lymphs they have a nutritive value that is it supplies nutrition and oxygen to the parts where blood cannot reach so the applied aspect related to the lymph that is hypoproteinemia Uh, it it leads to decrease in the colloidal osmotic pressure therefore the increased filtration occurs at the arterial arterial end and decrease in absorption of the fluid at the venous end resulting in abnormal collection of the fluid in the interstitial spaces which is called as edema this is in brief about the lymphatics thank you